Hollywood is notoriously unforgiving. Luckily for celebs, though, actual fans aren't nearly as fickle. These once disgraced stars had some pretty big scandals, but for some reason or another, everyone pretends they never happened. America's sweetheart, Reese Witherspoon, doesn't appear to have a disorderly bone in her body. Yet, here we are. It's one of those nights, you know, we went out to dinner in Atlanta and we had one too many glasses of wine. We thought we were fine to drive and we absolutely were not. Witherspoon was arrested for disorderly conduct in 2013 after her husband, Jim Toth, was pulled over and arrested for driving under the influence. To make matters worse, our fair lady of Sweet Home Alabama pulled the Do You Know Who I Am card, a move favored by child stars who've gone off the rails. Witherspoon was arrested on a Friday, and by that Sunday night, the wild star had released a heartfelt apology, stating, I clearly had one drink too many, and I am deeply embarrassed about the things I said. It was definitely a scary situation, and I was frightened for my husband husband, but that is no excuse. I am very sorry for my behavior." Over the last couple of years, we've managed to completely wipe Matthew McConaughey's naked bongo incident from our brains. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean it never happened. All right, all right, all right. In 1999, everybody's favorite Lincoln spokesperson was busted on suspicion of marijuana possession. According to the infamous police report, he was dancing around naked, playing bongo drums while another man cheered. The charges were dropped, and McConaughey nonchalantly described his visit to the Slammer as somewhere he wouldn't want to rent a place, but it was a nice stay for a night. Chris Brown is known for some pretty abhorrent things. So amidst all the headlines, it's easy to forget that he also had a day-long standoff with the SWAT team in 2016. Police just arrested singer Chris Brown after a day-long standoff at his Tarzana mansion. The incident began when Brown allegedly pulled a gun on a woman. She attempted to flee, so Brown reportedly followed her in a Jeep, but she escaped into a neighbor's yard and hid under an SUV. The neighbor called the police. Brown reportedly refused to let law enforcement into his home without a warrant, so police set up a camp outside as Brown embarked on a bizarre police standoff slash Instagram rant as helicopters circled overhead. Come on, my n What the f else do y'all want from me, bro? Brown was eventually arrested for felony assault with a deadly weapon. All that, and yet fans seem to wear blinders when it comes to Brown's behavior. Case in point, in May 2018, Spotify removed numerous abusers from its official playlists, yet Brown's catalog remained inexplicably untouched. In the Me Too era, it's kind of shocking that everyone seems to ignore the 1989 sex tape Rob Lowe shot with an underage girl. According to Yahoo!, the St. Elmo's Fire alum was in his early 20s when he picked up two women at a nightclub. The girls agreed to be videotaped, and Lowe filmed their enthusiastic romp. The video was circulated around the world, which wouldn't necessarily have been a huge deal had one of the participants not been 16 years old. Lowe believed the girl was at least 21 because he picked her up at a club where he'd been carted. The problem is people don't know the facts of the case. They don't know it's a bar where I get carted going in. So why wouldn't I assume everybody else is 21? Unfortunately, after the video surfaced, he was slapped with a lawsuit by the teen's mother, and his scandal was plastered across tabloids. He received a mere 20 hours of community service for taping the encounter with a partner under 18, and his career barely suffered. The following year, Lorne Michaels let Lowe host SNL, and everything was more or less forgotten. Before he became Tim the Toolman Taylor or Santa Claus, Tim Allen served a 28-month sentence for trafficking cocaine, and it could have been a whole lot worse. According to Defamer, Allen was nabbed by undercover state troopers at the Kalamazoo airport after selling one and a half pounds of cocaine for a whopping $42,000. He ended up taking a plea deal in exchange for information. As a result, the most serious charges were dropped, saving him from a mandatory life sentence. After the experience, Allen swiftly turned his life around. He went from jail time to to tool time, and today most of us either don't know about his sordid past or pretend the whole thing never happened. What a tool, man. Bruno Mars has hit every possible career milestone a musician could hit. As much as we'd like to forget, there was once a time when the young pop star almost uptown funked up his career with a felony cocaine charge. In 2010, Mars was arrested in the Las Vegas Hard Rock Hotel after he was nabbed with 2.6 grams of what E! News describes as a white powdery substance believed to be cocaine. Shocker, it was, in fact, cocaine. E! News reports that he was charged with felony cocaine possession, but that was dismissed after he performed 200 hours of community service paid a $2,000 fine, and underwent eight hours of drug counseling.